you may or may not have heard of the VIX index. The VIX is one of the most watched indexes in the US markets and we are going to take a deep dive into the VIX index and why this index is so important to follow, so important to watch. We are also going to look at the details about how this VIX index is calculated but we will try to keep the discussions at the practical level. So the VIX index is called the fear index and will be looking at why this is the case, why it's called the fear index. Uh, in general, the VIX index gives an important sentiment indicator to all the participants in the market and that sentiment is the sentiment of fear. So a high level of VIX means that there is a high level of fear in the market and obviously the converse is also true. So now the VIX index itself came into being uh, in the early 90s, about 1992, 1993. But this relationship has evolved over the last 20 years. Back in the 90s, this the relationship between the VIX index and the SPX um, was very different from what it is today. So we know in general that as volatility goes up, we know that option prices are going to increase. Now we are going to see on the Think or Swim platform how this takes place and what it is and what exactly does a high level of VIX do to option prices. So we are going to take a few different examples there. Um, you will see that the VIX levels, the VIX is actually today at around uh, 14 uh, or 13 to 15. So it's been, it's been fairly low. So that's a, when you have the VIX in the teens, it's a fairly low number for the VIX. When it starts going above 20 and 30, that's when there is fear creeping into the markets. And when it's over 40 or 50, there's absolute mayhem. I mean, there's chaos in the markets, in global markets in general. And you'll see what that kind of an environment does to option prices. And we're also going to look at a stock. We're going to look at Google and we'll study what the VIX levels did, does to option prices. The VIX is an index, but it is not traded like a stock. Although there are options on the VIX, the VIX is not a stock. You cannot buy and sell the VIX itself. And therefore, if you have options on the VIX, all options, as we know, must have an underlying asset. And so this underlying asset is the VIX futures. Now, the VIX futures is a completely different product. It's not a stock. It's a futures contract. And futures contracts open up for three months at a time. So you'll have the VIX futures for the next month, the month after that, and then the month after that. But the relationship of the VIX options is with the VIX futures. And therefore, the VIX options do not make a very good trading uh, vehicle at all. In fact, I would highly recommend that you do not trade the VIX at all. The uh, Trade the VIX options, I meant because these options are based on how the futures move. And so if you don't understand how the VIX futures work, then your options are not going to behave the way you expect them to behave. So for example, I'll give you a small example. Let's say the VIX index goes up by two or three points. You would expect that if you hold VIX call options, and let's say the VIX goes up by two or three points, you would expect that your VIX uh, call options will increase in value, but it may not do that because the VIX futures may be doing something else that the VIX options has a relationship with the VIX futures and not with any other underlying asset. But having said that, the VIX index is one of the most important uh, indexes to follow. And so that's what we're going to focus on in this course. Then in the last few years, we've had a couple of other VIX products. One is the NASDAQ VIX, which is the symbol NVX. And then we have a third VIX product for the Russell 2000 index. And that's called the RVX. And then finally, what is the other important thing about the VIX index is how do you trade based on a certain value for the VIX index? So whether the VIX index is low, medium or high. What kind of trades can you take? How would you take advantage of all these three situations? Because we know, you know, when we deal with options, you can pretty much deal with any kind of situation in the market. How will you optimize your trading strategy based on a certain VIX environment that exists at that time?
So some of it may get a little technical, but I think it's important for you to hang in there and just uh, follow what's going on. Now, none of this is extremely important where you have to remember all these uh, technicalities. This is all just for your information. The practical aspects of this course are going to be two things. One is, how does a certain level of VIX affect option prices? And two is, given a certain level of VIX, what kind of trading strategies make sense? So those are the real two takeaways from this course. And we'll be looking at both of these in detail. But to understand what we are talking about, you do need to go through a little bit of technical stuff, the definitions and, uh, you know, what was the design behind the VIX index and all of that. So we'll go over to section two, where we'll take a look at the VIX definitions and, it's, uh, and the way it's calculated. This is a document issued by the CBOE about volatility indexes. This is a very recent document. It's, uh, it was released in January 2012. And first of all, we can see that the VIX is based on the S&P 500 index options and is considered by many to be the world's premier barometer of investor sentiment and market volatility. So the VIX is a measure of volatility in the market. But let's just take a brief uh, look at what the CBOE themselves have uh, presented in this document. This is a chart of the VIX average daily closing value from 1990 to 2011. So if we just look at this top graph here, we know that the years between 1992 and 1997 were you can see the S&P 500 index here in the blue if you look at the second chart and then the orange graph is that of the VIX index. So in the early years you can see that between 1993 to 1999 the S&P was going up very nicely and in many cases the VIX also started going up. I guess this is when the VIX was very early in its uh, days and market participants were somewhat confused how to use the VIX and therefore you had some extraordinary uh, correlationships here. This, this is a correlationship that broke down, that broke down somewhere around 1999, uh, just before the dot-com bust, it started breaking down. So let's just study that. So what happens here is that the S&P 500 starts going up from 1993 or 1994 all the way up to 99 and 2000. And the VIX in its early years also started going up. We can see that the VIX level, the VIX level is measured on the left hand side of the uh, Y axis. So we have a VIX level of about perhaps 15 during these years. And as the S&P climbs from about 600 all the way to 1200 and, and, and further, the VIX also climbs and we can see that the VIX reaches a level of about 45 in 1998, 97, 98. And then the VIX actually starts dropping when the S&P starts going higher. And you can see that this is actually a low point in the VIX. So it starts a new kind of a relationship with the S&P 500 sometime around 1997 or 98. So as the markets start to go up, the VIX starts to come down. Once the dot-com crash happened in 99-2000, the S&P starts crashing and then the VIX starts going up. So from that time onwards, the VIX and the S&P 500 have been negatively correlated, meaning if the S&P 500 goes up, the VIX comes down. And if the S&P 500 goes down, the VIX goes up. So we can see that kind of a correlation perfectly from around 19, from the time of the dot-com crash. And actually slightly a couple of years before that, it starts around 97, 98. That's when when the markets start to go up, the VIX starts to come down. And similarly, when the market starts to go down, the VIX starts to go up. So from that point onwards, the VIX and the S&P 500 have held inverse correlation. Then from 2002 onwards, 
the S&P 500 starts to go up and the VIX starts to come down. So from a level of about 45 in 2001, 2002, the VIX drops down again to a level of about 15, maybe even slightly lower than that. And then we have the financial crisis of 2007, 2008, uh, mostly it's 2008 and 2009. So the S&P starts crashing again and comes all the way almost down to 600. But the VIX goes from a level of about 12 all the way up to 80. In fact, the high of the VIX was is on, um, based on the closing value, is 80.86 on November 20th of 2008. And that is this point right here. But you'll see that the the high for the day for the intraday high for that day is I think it's crossed 90 also. We'll go to the Think or Swim platform and we'll exactly see what the high was but I believe it's in the 90s. But the closing value high is 80.86 and that is almost at the same point where the S&P 500 is at its lowest point. And then from 2009 onwards, the market starts to go up again. The S&P 500 is going up. And you can see that the VIX crashes all the way down back to 15. So it comes down from a value of close to 90 all the way down to 15. And since then, again, you can see that even if there is a slight hiccup in the market. So let's look at this part right here. The S&P probably crashed from 1200 to perhaps 1100 or maybe 1050. That's about it. But look at the VIX. It jumped from 15 to perhaps 45 again. And then the market starts to go up again. And then the VIX crashes back to 15. And then again, we have a hiccup right here, which was last August. And we're going to see this on the chart. It's a very recent phenomenon. So we're going to study this part of the S&P action and the VIX action when we go to the trading platform. So what ends up happening is, again, the S&P crashes from perhaps around 1300 level down to about 1100. And the VIX spikes from 15 all the way up to almost 50. And since then, we've been, the last four or five months, we've been on an uptrend and the VIX is back down to about 16 or 17 level. So while the initial years I think there was some confusion as to how the VIX index worked. You can see that in these years, the S&P 500 and the VIX was in perfect correlation with each other. Then sometime around 97, 98, this correlation started to break down. And as the S&P went up, the VIX came down. And then as the S&P came down, the VIX started going up. And then as the S&P went up again, the VIX went down. And so on and so forth. So it's been on a perfect inverse correlation for about 13 to 14 years now and that's the way it's going to be in the future because we have to understand how the VIX itself is calculated and we also have to understand what kind of a value or what kind of a sentiment do investors attach to the VIX index and I think that has a big part to play also. Before we go and see how the VIX is calculated, I just want to show you these two graphs as well. This graph shows how the VIX is negatively correlated with the S&P 500. So we can see that in the last uh, eight or nine years, we have a total negative correlation between the VIX and the S&P 500. So what these numbers mean here is that for every one point move up, in the S&P 500 index, the VIX goes down by 76 cents. Similarly, you can see that the correlation in the more recent years are actually quite a bit close to a negative one. So a negative one correlation would be a perfect inverse correlation, it has a beta of negative one. So for every one point move to the upside on the S&P 500, the VIX will go down by one point. And for every one point move in the S&P 500 to the downside will result in a one point increase in the VIX to the upside.
So it's a perfectly inverse correlation. Well, it's not perfect. It's, a, it's 0.84 and 0.85, which is very close to a perfect inverse correlation. So you've heard me say in a couple of uh, previous courses, when the markets go up, the volatility levels go down because there is no fear. When the markets are going up, there is a perception of stability and therefore the level of the VIX comes down. And when the markets go down, the level of the fear goes up and therefore the values of the VIX go up. So you do have options on the VIX, but the options are a little strange because the VIX index options are based on the VIX futures. We've talked of options on an underlying asset that is either a stock uh, index, an ETF, or some kind of commodity like gold or silver and things like that. The underlying asset for the VIX options are the VIX futures. So this may be a little complicated. You don't have to worry about it because I would highly recommend not trading the VIX. The VIX is an extremely important indicator to follow, not to trade, are based on the VIX futures and not on the S&P 500. So there is a mismatch there and the VIX will the, the options on the VIX will not move as you expect it to. Your standard delta and your uh, other Greeks may not uh, work the same way like you would expect it to. So I would highly recommend not trading the VIX. What does a high level of VIX do to option prices and what does a low level of VIX do to option prices? That's because that's the critical point and you can, and you'll see that it, it makes a world of difference.